Hey guys, it's Vince Murdoch, your host for MMA Surge. Today I'm here to show you how to fight a taller opponent. When fighting a taller opponent, it's important that uh, we're not staying at range. So what we're looking for is closing the gap and staying active when we're on the outside. So that means if I'm working the bag, uh, I'm not standing directly in front of it and I'm always working to close a certain gap meaning like not your traditional, just standing in front of it and punching away, right? We want to work the bag and that means uh, moving around it and staying busy. A lot of taller guys are going to try to keep you at range and on the end of their punches, right? So ideally you never want to stop or stay still and we always want to get that angle. Angles are really important when falling someone tall or fighting someone tall and ideally always kind of staying away from their power so they're not always lining you up for that big power shot. Right? So by closing the gap, there's two ways I like to do this. One, either come behind my punches or behind their punches or underneath their punches. Right? Jab being one of the best. Mike Tyson does this really, really well. Kind of like an in-between uh, hook or jab. Um, when I'm on the outside of the bag, meaning my target is over here, I have to go to my target in order to punch him, right? meaning I'm not in front of it. So I want to come in behind my punches, jab being one of the best, right? I really want to close that gap and then I want to come in right behind it. This is where you hear that expression of like fighting in a phone booth, right? Guys like me <laughs> who have short arms and have been dealing with uh, fighting taller people almost their whole career, uh, I've gotten pretty good at fighting at these, these closer distances, right? Taller guys are going to have a harder time fighting you there. They're always going to try and break away, separate, and create more distance. But that's where we want to be. And once you're there, you kind of want to maintain that position uh, and keep attacking that angle so you can stay there longer, right? Once you're back at range, you got to do the same thing again. So it's important that once you do all the work to getting in there, you make it count, all right? So once we're coming in behind that jab, now we can, we've closed the distance and we came in behind our punches. The whole idea is to get the guy's guard up, right? That's the whole idea by punching. We put something in his face and then we come in right underneath it, all right? You know, if they're, head, if they're super tall or taller than you, uh, punching in the head is not usually as easy because it's, it's, it's higher, right? So I like to bring their head down by attacking the body first, right? Uh, one of my favorite ones is just go across the body, hook to the head, all right? So, Again, as we work in, we're staying busy on the outside. We're staying busy, staying busy. And I come in underneath my jab, bring my cross to the body, and I hook to the head. Boom. All right. I like to reload these ones, hit the body, and do them back and forth. So he's overcompensating with his hands or his guard. On the other hand, if he's punching you, it's the same thing. We're, always, we're moving our head. We're moving our head. If he's punching you, we're always thinking about closing that distance. All right or just not getting hit. If we're moving, we're moving to a new position. If we're moving, we're new, moving to a new position, right? Guys that are longer, they're gonna try to keep you, keep you at bay. And by staying still or trying to pick and parry these punches, you're doing them a favor by staying there. So the whole idea is to be on your bike, you're continuing moving, you're always moving, always looking for that angle. Uh, when you're ready to come in, you either see their shot or you've noticed their pattern and uh, you come in on their shot. So if it's uh, the jab, you'll slip in and you'll come in right underneath, find an exit, repeat the process, all right? Again, uh, on the other way, come in behind your own punches. It doesn't have to be the jab, that's just my favorite, and it's always a good punch to come in behind. Again, coming in behind the jab, I'll step, I'll slide underneath, my feet are in position underneath me, and now I can fight from here. That's the whole idea, all right? If he backs up, then it's just a double jab. But still, we're closing that gap, right? I always, on the bag, I like to work forehead in the bag and I'm working the body shots here brings his head down boom all right all right guys let's throw on some gloves a couple key points when uh, working the back for a taller opponent uh, one keeping the distance two closing the gap three finding a safe uh, exit all right so I'm gonna go over all those again when I'm working the bag I'm always working my footwork staying away and coming in so I'm gonna close the gap now close the gap now I'm in. Now I can work my punches and then my escape, right? So my rifle feel off. Moving, moving. Head's always moving. And I'm moving. Safe exit, coming in. And I'm moving. Again, coming in behind my punches. And I'm moving.
finding an exit. Punches and combinations that I like to throw that once I've made it to the inside, uh, once I've broken in and I've came in and I've closed that distance or that gap, um, I like to attack the body to drop his, drop his level down or his guard, right? A lot of people, when they get hit, their hands are here and they're away from their body, right? You go to the body, their hands go here. You're supposed to bring your head, but you know, they don't always do that. So uh, the idea would be to go high, low, high, making them overcompensate either way, right? So some of my favorite ones, going high, attacking the head. I come in, now there's the body shot, right? Cause he'll be guarding up here. He goes there, he's probably gonna lower his hand for the body and then I'll come back upstairs, all right? There's the right hand, I'll find my exit and then I'm out. All right, again. Again. All right, uh, let's focus on that last one. Once we've, uh, we've closed that gap and we've thrown the punches that we want, it's finding an exit, right? Finding an escape plan and making sure that we're not there uh, for him to catch up and, and start punching back, right? I think rolling against a taller opponent is always, always ideal for me. It's always worked well for me, but it's making sure I'm rolling outside the power uh, and away from all his weapons, right? So if you're fighting another Orthodox guy, his right hand's on this side, his knee's on this side, the power, his back leg kick. A lot of his weapons or his more uh, his power dominant is gonna be on that side. So once I've closed that gap, uh, it's always gonna be safer to roll to the right, right? I wanna change an angle, right? So if this is facing my opponent, we're both facing each other, I almost want to be facing a new direction. So when I throw that right, I always like to roll like I'm rolling right underneath my own hand and I'm facing somewhere else. All right, and then we would circle out, find somewhere else to go. All right, so again, once we're inside, we come in behind that jab, throw the punches that you want, whatever it is. I always like to roll off my right hand. You can roll off a hook too. We can roll here, come back and roll, but it's important that we're, we're not rolling and staying in front of the bag, which can happen when you're just working the bag because no one's punching you back. Make sure that you're changing, work around the bag. If you're facing the mirror here, make sure you're facing the other direction when you roll. So when we're here, we're rolling, I wanna step so I'm facing another direction. Does that make sense? Finding an exit and doing it again. If we wanna go the other way, which is also possible. If I'm ever gonna go outside to the right, I wanna make sure I'm away from all the power or outside of all this power. So if you're using a bag, just making sure that my head is outside the bag at this point, right? Because this is where all his weapons, you don't wanna do anything in his center line, all right? So if I'm going to the right, I usually wanna step, or once I've made it, uh, close the gap, and I'm inside, I wanna make sure that I'm outside his, uh, outside his power before I go to make that exit and then I can go, all right? So anytime I'm exiting towards the right, I prefer not to roll as much. Anytime I go there, uh, a lot of times, especially taller guys will tend to uh, have a conscious mind for the, the takedowns and they'll throw up a knee if you're here, right? So there's that knee. Try to stay outside of their power, right? So for me, the power would be outside of this. That's where I wanna take my head and all my, my action outside, right? So if he throws a right, you would slip outside, right? This would be his head or his, his power hand. So I wanna be, once I've closed that gap or I'm already inside, I wanna be outside it. I like to do this normal slips here. I don't like to roll too much to this side. So just pivoting, double jab, circling out, and then right back to it. And then circling back to center. All right, keeping the distance, moving, staying still, closing that gap, circling back out. We can roll. Then finding, finding your distance. All right, guys, those are my tips on how to fight a taller opponent. Keep the distance, close the gap, find an exit. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching MMA Surge. Dang it. That thing just fell all the way down to my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> just tape that f***er all the way around my back. All the way in front. It's my Cody hook. <laughs> <laughs>